Hello, boys and girls, young adults. I'm so happy to be here with you today. My name is Mrs. Arsenault, and we're going to be learning about some ways that we can keep ourselves safe, and especially in a Catholic environment where we know that God wants us to be safe. He is taking care of us at all times. He is speaking to our brains, to our heart, to let us know when things are not the way they should be. You know, sometimes when I go into the younger grades, the children will say, you're here to talk about stranger danger. And I'll say, well, not really. And we go through how God made all people and made all people good. However, because we have free will, sometimes we choose not to be so good. Even the people we know and love could do that as well. So boys and girls, let's start off though with prayer, okay? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we are so grateful for this time to learn about how much you love us and how much you wanna keep us safe. And so we give this meeting to you. Speak to our hearts, speak to our mind. Help us to be the good people that you created us to be and help us to make good choices, safe choices, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's always good when you start off anything with a prayer whether that be a business meeting or a school classroom assignment, or even just walking outside, waking up in the morning, just talking to God, a few quiet moments, and something that you can do anytime, any place. And how blessed we are that we are in an environment, either in religious education or in schools, Catholic schools or public schools, where we can learn about how God has control over our lives how God wants to help us at every moment, and how God really appreciates our thanksgiving, just turning to him and thanking him for all the blessings in your life. So part of today is kind of a review of maybe some things you have learned about internet safety, and we'll get to that a little bit later, but also some other topics of concern about safety issues that we may encounter in person. And so let's get started talking about some of the rules that adults need to follow. And you young boys, you young men and women, you are all empowered by God to say no when you need to say no, to make good choices. When something makes you uncomfortable, to get away from it. And so let's talk about some of those things today. One of them in your particular age category because you like to help people. And sometimes that could be used against you, but not in a, a way that you can't make a good choice. You just have to make a choice to recognize when there may be a trick being used to kind of lure you into an unsafe situation. And at your particular age, sometimes the tricks could be something like money, Somebody driving down the street and saying, here, here's $5. Can you give me directions? And of course, not going near the car, not going near the person. And just as the children are younger, we say, say no and go. And it still stands for you, even in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, to say no, but say it loud. So if there's anybody around, they can hear you and then go. Go to safe people, go to safe adults. And so adults shouldn't ask children to help them solve a problem. So say for instance, somebody asked you for directions. That's asking for you to solve a problem for them. Who should they be asking? Yeah, they should be asking another adult. You know, recently I taught in my own hometown in my parish, and a student came up to me after the presentation. He came up to me at Mass, actually, the following Sunday, and he said, Mrs. Arsenal, I was able to practice what I learned. He said he was going into Dunkin' Donuts, 
And as he was opening the door, a man was coming out and he had a lot of donuts. He had, you know, those big boxes full of donuts. And he said, thank you to the student of mine who had opened the door for him. And he said, son, could you also open the door to my car to help me in? And this is a very nice boy. And he said, but a siren went on in my mind. He shouldn't be asking me to solve this problem for him. And so he said, no, sir, I can't. And he was walking into Dunkin' Donuts. He said, but I will find you an adult who can. And he said, as he walked into Dunkin' Donuts, can somebody help him get into his car? And that's as simple as it is. It's just being kind, being the loving person you are, but creating a distance between yourself and the person who is asking you to solve a problem. Now, don't get me wrong. This doesn't mean your parents can't ask for your help or your teachers can't ask for your help. They certainly can. And we are to respect them and to help them. Another topic that we talk about in this presentation is about what we call when the children are younger, the bathing suit rule. Any parts of our body that are covered by a bathing suit are private parts. And here's the rule, but not just a rule, it's a law. And it's a law that protects you. Whether we know the person or not, with the exception of your doctors, with your parents present, nobody should ever ask or should ever touch a part of your body that is covered by a bathing suit, your private parts. Nor should they ever ask you to touch theirs and they shouldn't be asking to ever see your body as well in the private parts of your body. And what do you say? The same thing. You say no. And then you go towards a safe adult. Create as much distance as you can between that person. Now, suppose the person said, it's a secret. Don't tell anybody. They could even threaten you. You still need to tell a safe adult. Be safe with that. So those are just two important rules we learn, and we learn about the tricks that could lure you into unsafe behaviors. But now we're going to turn a little bit towards technology. And because we know that most of you are all using technology every day, especially right now, you may be using it for a lot of your school studies or even school itself. And so we need our technology. And God gave people the brains to create this technology. Why is internet safety important? Think about it. You know, as you get older, you're going to be thinking more and more about how the internet could help us in so many ways, but also how it could be used for destruction too, how it could be used for unsafe things. So it's always changing. So we have to change with it too. We're going to be talking about posting things online, how it could have serious consequences. We're going to talk about how it's so important not to give personal information and post anything that could ruin your privacy. What do you do when you get unwanted requests from other people? So what do you like to do online? Think about it. Do you like to text? Do you like to play games? Do you use Google to help you with your homework? You download music? Think about the things that you most like to do. Are you chatting with family, friends? Are you on any social media sites? Some of the things that we need to avoid though are sending me messages, posting inappropriate pictures, talking to people you don't know, or visiting any adult sites. They're risky. All of these things are risky. Inappropriate content, such as listed here. And it may seem cool to you to look up this type of content, but there's a reason why it's not meant for you. It could make you feel bad. It could confuse you. It could make you uncomfortable. It could even scare you. So don't look at it. What should you do if inappropriate content comes up? Well, turn off the screen, use the back button, tell a trusted adult and report it 
to the website manager. Inappropriate online behavior. What are these things? Embarrassing things about you, other people, pictures that are revealing, hate speech, illegal behaviors, pranks. You could get a bad reputation because of this. The things that we do right now, they're going to follow us the rest of our lives because we have what we call a blueprint that stays with us. You're going to see a video, and this video is about a football player who really would like to be recruited. However, he's worried about some of the things he's posted are not really appropriate. And he knows that they could cause people to have a bad impression of him. And so let's watch this video and think about yourself. Is there anything that you may have posted that you're not proud of, that you wish you can get rid of? trying to apply for that football scholarship. Recruiters and coaches look for all that stuff now, you know. I don't want to be turned down because I have something stupid on my page. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I guess you deleted the whole thing. No, smart guy, but I did change my profile name. Yeah, I guess rather be sleeping isn't going to impress those coaches. What'd you change it to? I changed it to... Gridiron Man! Pick it up! Bam! Whoa, settle down there, tough guy. Sorry, dude. <laughs> and what about your list of extracurricular activities? I know, I know. I took off all that stuff about stealing the position mascot. Oh, and switching the boys and girls' signs to the bathroom. No, that was funny. Now I'm all about protein shakes and ancient six days a week. Welcome to the ah! show. You can look, but you can't touch. Oh, I'm not even going to comment on that one. Hey, and what about your blog? My blog? Yeah, so I guess you deleted that whole rant about Twinkies and Kobe being the perfect meal. <laughs> oh, and remember that photo from Halloween? We had to dress up as a ballerina because you lost that bet. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, and remember that time you and I got caught because we were going to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, everyone can hear you. Everyone. Everyone can already see it. It's on your page. It's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, looks like I got some changes to make. It's gonna be another long night. Uh, gotta go. Thanks, Mike. No problem, Gridiron Man. Good luck. <laughs> and just remember that, you know, when you post something online, you can't take it back. You know, and it's not just what you post online too. It's also texting. I know that probably most of you have phones at this point, or many of you do. And I have a little story about a phone and texting, and it has to do with a soccer team. And some of the students started to text some derogatory comments about somebody on the team. And it kept snowballing, and some of the students got off the text because they realized it was not right. And there was a father who was nearby his son's phone and he heard his son's phone pinging. And so he picked it up and he looked at the text and he said, wow, this is not good. This is a true story. And he looked at the text 
that were inflammatory about one of the soccer players. And he called the coach, soccer coach, and he read him the text. And the soccer coach's attitude was not being alarmed. He was just saying, well, you know, kids will be kids. The father was not happy, so he took the phone and he brought it into the principal. And the principal looked at the thread of text and he did two things. Number one, he fired the coach for not taking this serious. And the second thing he did was he suspended the students. And when you have a suspension on your record, something that you can't take back, it influences your future. And just like we saw in that video with Tad, Tad realized that things he had done and said and done online, just like texting, can influence his future of getting the job you want, getting into the school you want. So again, boys and girls, just be very careful. Ask yourself, is this something that I would want my teachers to see or want my parents to see? And if not, maybe you shouldn't text it. Maybe you shouldn't post it because you can't take it back. You should also protect your online privacy. Don't give out too much information about yourself because it spreads very quickly and it's very risky. And people can get a hold of it that you don't want to have information about you. And unfortunately, the people that are using this information in the wrong way, people that are making wrong choices, they know far more than we do about technology and how to get private information about you. We're going to see another video and in this video, you're going to see how a text message could get way out of control. So let's watch this video. Totally. Look at this. 
The cells are dividing and sharing information at an accelerated pace until there's like a zillion cells, and they all know the same thing. Man, these cells are out of control. Tell me about it. So avoid sharing personal information. You saw in this little short, kind of funny video, but it's really not so funny how quickly something could spread. Don't share people's phone numbers when you're online. Call them up instead and give them somebody else's phone number if somebody has allowed you to do that. Personal information, location, email addresses, passwords, your address, all things that should never be shared online. Privacy. Don't share the information. Don't post videos of yourself, your private parts. Use privacy settings. Choose appropriate screen names. Nothing that you would be ashamed of afterwards. And only accept friends that you know in your real life. You know, sometimes when I'll go into schools and we'll talk about this, and I'll say, how many friends do you have? 300. Are they really your friends? And lastly, don't make jokes that could be taken as threats. And you have the right to say no to anything that is an inappropriate request, no matter who made that request, an older teen, a stranger, an adult. You don't have to do it. What to do instead? Block. Block or unfriend them, report the behavior, talk to somebody about it, talk to a trusted adult. Think about the people who are in your life right now that you can trust, that you can tell anything to, and talk to them about this. You shouldn't talk about dating you. Nobody should be asking for revealing pictures or asking to meet you on offline. If these things happen to you, Number one, it's not your fault. But again, talk to a trusted adult about this. What happened? And it can be reported to the cyber tip line. You want to see another video, and this is about, you know, friend or fake. Not everybody has bad intentions, but you have to be careful when you're talking to people you don't know. But what can you do? You can block it. Don't accept it and don't meet and tell someone. Sometimes it's hard, but it's important, very important to talk to an adult that you can trust. Maybe a counselor at school, or it could be one of your teachers, your parents, maybe a grandparent. But think about somebody that you can trust, that you can tell anything to and they will believe you, and they won't blame you for anything. Report anybody that may send you an adult pictures or a video, or even if you're doing your homework and you wander onto a site that is very inappropriate, make sure you report it. Report anyone who talks to you about adult things or asks to meet you in person. Reporting means you are standing up for yourself. You are made in the image of God, and you are meant to stand up for what is right and what is good. And don't ever be afraid to do that. And God will speak to your brain. He will speak to your heart and tell you when you need to report something. I'm going to talk just for a few minutes about bullying and technology. And I mentioned that little story earlier about texting and how texting could be also used in bullying. Sometimes bullies bully others because they don't feel good about themselves. And when you report bullying, you're actually helping not only yourself, but you're also helping the person who's bullying. It is said that people are hurting and hurting people oftentimes try to hurt others. It tends to bring them up by bringing you down. We need to stop bullying because it is so against our Catholic faith, so against our God, and it is even against the law. We're going to see another little video here. In this video, you're going to see how somebody reacts 
and she receives a mean text message on her cell phone. tell anybody that okay you and i both know we're just friends right yeah yeah i know we know that but does she listen she should not be saying those things to you well, even if we did have something going on which we don't well i mean unless I can. lolo just don't respond to her save the text messages and if she doesn't stop you're gonna have to tell your parents or something all right how did she even get my cell number in the first place how should I know? She probably swiped it from my phone. Great. Great. This is why she's... I know, but I hate being called names. Yeah, but it's not like they're true. Look, don't let something like this ruin your day. Let's just eat. Sasha! <laughs> you know, cyberbullying, as you see in this picture, it hurts. It hurts others. And as you saw in that video, you know, it certainly hurt her. People feel sad, they feel alone. They try to avoid school if that's where the bullying is taking place. And they feel like it's gonna get worse if I tell someone. They believe that no one can help. But you don't know what problems somebody else has going on. So it's important that you never add anything that could really hurt somebody. And if you're being cyberbullied, what can you do? Well, don't respond. Block the bully, set up new accounts, make a report, tell somebody that you trust. Tell a trusted adult. Don't go and tell maybe a friend. Tell a teacher. Tell somebody who can do something about it. If you have not been cyberbullied yourself, you may have seen it happening to other people. And you're thinking, oh gosh, I just don't want to get involved in this. I don't want to get um, earmarked too. I don't want people to start to make fun of me because it's not just all in cyberspace. It's not just all on the internet. It happens in person too. So what can you do? Well, don't join in on it. Maybe you can support the person who's being bullied. Maybe just make a little bit of an effort to be kind. Send them a message. Sit with them at lunch. But refuse to join in. And if you're with people who are starting to bully somebody, point out something good about the person. Bullies continue to be bullies until somebody stops them. And you can be the person that stops it. Report it to an adult. How about you? If you don't like somebody, keep critical remarks to yourself. It's not Christ's way to be pointing out anything bad about somebody else. It's about pointing out the good. In fact, I have a little bit of homework for you. How about every day, if you find three good things to say, or to do. It could be in school, it could be at home. So instead of these negative things, don't start and forward the rumors, do something positive. And you can stop it with the kindness that we just spoke about. Start to practice it in your own life. Just little simple acts of kindness that may bring somebody up, might make somebody feel great you notice, even if you make a simple compliment to somebody, even if you thank the grocery person checkout, if you're with your parents, you'll see a smile form on their face. And that's really, boys and girls, what we're meant to do. 
We're meant to spread kindness wherever we are. It'll change the world. You know, we just said the Our Father together, thy kingdom come, God's kingdom is supposed to come on this earth. And it starts with you. And what you're saying and what you're doing with others. People are watching you. People know that you're a Catholic, that you're a Christian. And when they see Christ acting within you, they want that too. They want to be like you. And you can change the world. One person at a time. So some tips to remember. Be careful when you're talking online. Think before you post, and don't ever be a cyber bully, ever. And tell an adult when you need some help. Look for the adults in your life that can help you. Show adults that you are responsible. Say responsible things, do responsible things. Show them that you know what you're doing and they'll feel confident that you are responsible online that you are responsible offline as well. So I thank you so much for being with me today. As a final word to you all today, just wanna to remind you, you are made in the image of God. You are perfect just the way you are. Nobody ever has the right to say anything that is derogatory or mean to you. You have the dignity of Christ the Christ that lives within you. You are made in God's image. Okay, so let's close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you so much for this time we've had together. And please, put these things into our minds. Set off sirens when we are in an unsafe or an uncomfortable situation. Help us to go to the adults that we trust keep us safe and remind us, Lord, how wonderful we are created, how you have a purpose for every one of our lives and you want to keep us safe. Lord, your mother, Mary, she kept you safe and she was forever watching over us because she's our mother in heaven. So let's together ask her help, her intercession and keeping us safe. Together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Thank you so much for being with me, and God bless you all.